guys, it's Jessica here. And as you guys know, Holy Week, which is one of the longest holidays here in the Philippines, begins this week. And so yeah, I thought why not talk about the Holy Week traditions here in the Philippines, not only traditions, but also superstitions, and just talk about the events that happened during the week as I react to them because honestly speaking, I am kind of new to Holy Week because even if I lived in the Philippines for now more than 10 years now, I guess, most of the time in April, which is the beginning of summer, right? It's getting so hot nowadays, guys. Anyway, every summer, it was a time when it was a summer vacation at school, right? So my family and I would always go back to Korea during summer to visit Korea. Even last year, I went back to Korea end of March, so I wasn't able to spend the Holy Week in the Philippines. So yeah, let's get Get into it. So first of all, what is Holy Week? Holy Week is the most sacred week in the liturgical year in Christianity. So it starts on Palm Sunday and ends on Holy Saturday, followed by the Easter Sunday. So actually the official beginning of Holy Week this year is from April 2nd until the April 8th. So it's actually a whole week. First of all, Holy Week in the Philippines is called Mahal na araw. You know, Filipino words, when put nicely, it sounds really beautiful, like mahal na araw. That sounds like, yeah. Again, Holy Week is one of the two most important religious events in the Philippines. The other one being, of course, Christmas. And obviously it is because of the big majority of the Filipinos are Roman Catholic. And I know a lot of you guys also asked me about what is the dominant religion in Korea. And as far as I know, around half or more than half of the Korean population assert that they do not link themselves with any religion. And the other 50, around half, is Christianity, and the other half is Buddhism. Among that quarter percentage of Christianity, some of them are Roman Catholics. So unlike the Philippines and Korea, there are not many Catholics out there. So when I first came to the Philippines, that was actually one of the things that I really noticed first. Also because I went to a Catholic school in the beginning in La Salva College. We had to bring the rosary in school. We had to learn how to hold the rosary. And I did not grow up from a Christian family. And I also belong in that 50% of Korean population. So yeah, everything was really new for me because because every beginning of the class, and there are like how many classes in a day, right? We had to pray. If I think about it now compared to the other schools in the Philippines that I've been to, in La Salle really was clear that it was a Catholic school as we really practiced those traditions. So now let's look in through the Holy Week traditions in the Philippines. So the first one is Pai Son or Babasa, which is from Holy Monday to Holy Wednesday, the start of the singing of the Paison or Pabasa. This non-stop reading of Paison is facilitated by the chanters working in shifts. Oh, here's the sample video. Yeah, but this is a familiar scene though, like singing in the church. The song is so, so good. The next one is Senaculo. So the Spanish word Senaculo or site where Jesus Christ shared the Last Supper with his apostles is the origin of Senaculo term in Filipino. Ah, this scene. I've learned this. I've learned this in the religion class in La Salle. Wow. You know, the fact that they do these in the streets is very impressive for me because in Korea, we have these kind of like historic or religious events, right? But it's not common to see them doing it in the public, like wearing all the costumes. But they're really acting it out here because it's really a play. Next one is penitentia. It is an act of self-punishing. Oh, penit- Oh, this is it. Because this you really see in the movie, right? The movie of the Jesus, and it is the Filipino practice of self-discipline that is often considered a spiritual act. Because what I heard is that this is really not a normal whip, you know, like there's some kind of like hook at the end. So when you hit yourself with a whip and then when you drag it out, it is shoves your flesh, your skin. I never seen this though in the streets. Oh my God, I don't want to watch this video. 
Oh my god, oh my god. Oh no, it's actually not the hook that I was talking about. But uh, so they cover their face and literally it's not just like they literally do it like as a constant act. Oh no! And the next one is fasting and abstinence. So this is the famous one, I guess. So on Ash Wednesday and Good Friday, the Catholic Church practices the discipline of fasting and abstinence to recall Jesus' sacrifices for humanity. Fasting is also something that is commonly done kind of like relatively compared to Korea. In Korea, I guess fasting is only common and trending in the concept of diet, but not necessarily for a religious spiritual act. So this is also something I noticed in the Philippines that was kind of commonly done because I also saw my other English teachers also fast and I actually tried fasting just following them. I know there are different types of fastings like instead of just not eating at all, no consumption, I know they still drink or like selective fasting, they still eat, you know, some like meat. Next is visiting seven churches, Visita Iglesia. The role of religion in the Philippines really shocks and overwhelms me every time I, you know, see these kind of events myself and also just, you know, when I see the whole Philippine society in general, right? and I see how big the role of religion is as well. And that religion also being Roman Catholic is also very different, right? I know the Philippines is like the most Catholic country in Asia. So yeah, it actually makes me think about many different things. And then here, off air media or no work long weekend. So starting from Thursday to whole holiday line, right? Next one is salubong or welcome. Men carry the figure of Christ in one procession while women follow the picture of Mary draped in a black mourning robe. But I also want to know if nowadays people really follow all these traditions and customs, especially like the new younger generation, because honestly, it's a very long tradition kind of like if you see there are like four days and also there's the visiting church, there's the this one and that one. And I know it's not like everyone in the family does it, right? What I assume for probably most families, they don't do it any of the things I really mentioned, let me know though in the comments because in Korea, we also have these traditions related to, I guess, our spirits, which are the ones that I actually explained during the Chinese New Year video, which is chare and chesa. It's done during either Thanksgiving or during a death anniversary of a family member. It's quite complicated if we were to do the actual whole custom tradition from the beginning. So nowadays people really modify it or they don't do it at all. Next one is superstitious beliefs. So the first one is excessive noise is discouraged. Next one is wounds take a longer time to heal. Do you guys know that? Do you guys believe in that? Wounds or cuts or any injuries acquired during the Holy Week will take longer time to heal. This myth might have been concocted by elders to keep their children indoors. Ah. Next is don't take a bath after 3 p.m. The use of water during Holy Week can be either good or bad depending on the day you use it. Avoid using water after 3 p.m. on Good Friday. It is the hour of Jesus Christ's death and the time of mourning. Evil will befall to anyone who disobeys. Oh, is this also common? I also never heard about this. Next is avoid staring at mirrors after 3 p.m. Why is it getting, why is it getting more and more scary? <laughs> staring at the mirror from 3 p.m. on Good Friday is prohibited. A gaze at mirrors will invite Ooh. evil spirits. People cover the mirror with black cloth and remove this on Easter Sunday. <gasps> really? <laughs> Do you guys really cover all the mirrors? Next ones, there are actually a few, such as strong presence of evil spirits. Avoid travel, but then isn't Holy Week also the time everyone travel? Like it's so traffic. I don't know. So yeah, although Holy Week is one of the longest holidays in the Philippines, and we all might just get caught up by the feeling that, oh my God, it's vacation time, it's red day, we can rest. But beyond that, I think it's always important to look through the reason why there is such holidays in the Philippines. Because in Korea, we don't. We don't rest in Holy Week. So I think just from the fact, it already shows the different cultures of both countries, depending on which holiday, which thing do you really celebrate, which day do you think is so important that you should make it a red day. 
my hiccup is still there. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this short video of me talking about the different Filipino Holy Week traditions. And yeah, happy Holy Week to everyone. Bye guys!